I'm Matt Flynn. I'm 16 years old and live in Illinois. Now I probably know why you're either watching this video or seeing it on the internet. It's probably because you are the parents that have a child who has collapsed to me. And you just found out and want to know what it's all about. I'm here to tell you from a kid's point of view. Galactosemia is a metabolic disorder, which is a way of saying that my body or liver does not have the correct enzymes to digest the dairy in any type of dairy product. Now, if I were to have anything in, with dairy in it, I wouldn't break into hives or anything like that. It would be a slow process where I may begin throwing up, trying to get it out of my system. But the end result may be death or serious medical consequences such as cataracts, learning disabilities, speech disorder, or in a woman's standpoint, ovarian failure. As you can see by this chart, the probability of a family having a child with galactosemia is one in four. And yet there are between 2,660 and 1,900 babies born with galactosemia in a year. So you're not alone. This chart shows how you, parents, have produced a baby with galactosemia. The green is the galactosemia gene, and the white is a normal gene. So, if you had four children, the first one would be normal, you'd have two carriers, so two that are the same as you, and only one with galactosemia. So the only way for you to pass on Two galactosemia genes, which are recessive, meaning that there is not too much of a chance for them to be passed on, is one in four. In this video, I will be interviewing some kids that have galactosemia. The president of Parents of Galactosemia Children, and a doctor that is an MD in the field of genetics. The Parents of Galactosemia Children is holding a conference in Chicago. I'll be there, and you will too. Hi, I'm Matt Flynn. I'm here at the site of the Parents of Glyphosemia Conference at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Rosemont. Let's go in. My name is Michelle Fowler, and I'm from Mandeville, Louisiana, and I'm the president for Parents of Glyphosemia Children. So, Michelle, what's it like to have a child at home that has glyphosemia? It's very difficult at times, especially being that he is in the middle of two girls who are not glyphosemia. But it's very rewarding at the same time. Uh, when I find foods that he can have that I didn't know existed, and when he can interact with other galactosemic children. Uh, do the others at home eat the same things that he eats? Definitely. He is a middle child, so his oldest sister does not have galactosemia, so I was not going to deprive her of the things that she can, could have for him. So there's both types of food in our house cheese sticks, Cheetos, everything that he cannot have plus what he can have. They're not separated in any kind of a way. So like, the, in the morning, do, does everyone have uh, dry cereal or mm -hmm. do uh, the girls? We would have cereal and if we had cereal he would just use his, his milk. I mean he calls oh. his milk his milk, you know. Mm -hmm. If you say, Landon, do you want milk? Sure. But he knows, you know, that he's getting either the rice stream or the soy because we go back and forth. And can you tell us about the Parents of Glyphosemic Children's Organization? Mm -hmm. PGC was founded over 26 years ago by a group of moms who wanted to try and find a better way of life for their children. They got together, they formed the 501c3 status and became a nonprofit organization to where people could volunteer and anyone who donated, it could be tax deductible. And it's basically grown and strived ever since. We have about 1,200 people in our database. And there are 323 non galactosemics in the United States that, today. Um, and we just try and mainly support families. And we've extended out to trying to support the children as well. We've recently formed a research group where we're trying to find research. What do you do at parties when there's food you can't have? Um, my mom usually brings stuff that I can have. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do when someone brings treats to school? Um, I usually just say, I think you just like have a snack or something. 
So you have like a snack box or something? Mm-hmm. Like that you can have? Yeah. Kind of stuff? Um, I don't know, maybe like cranberry cookies or something. Candies. Mm-hmm. Like that. Did you guys carry around a cheat sheet? No, it's got all the stuff that you can't have. Uh, my mom just knows what we can and can't have. We always look at the ingredients and stuff that we buy in store. Or if mom wasn't around when you guys were all at like a party or something with your boys. You would ask their mother. I would ask them. Oh, Michael would probably ask, to ask us. You guys bring like other food with you? To parties? Yeah. Oh, sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we know that, that, we, that what's there is going to be um, abnormal. Mm-hmm. Or if it's friends, then sometimes we call them up and ask them if they can do mm-hmm. something for us. Yeah. How do you explain going like, to CMA to others who don't know who, what it is? It's like um, kind of like a disability that we have, and um, it doesn't allow us to eat or um, any milk or drinks that have milk. Um, it is a rare allergy that my brother and I both have, and um, it allows us not to eat or drink anything with milk or dairy in it. Have you ever had a bad experience with it? No, I've had, we have had had milk in the past, but um, we we were just fine. We might have had, um like a stomach ache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like have you ever done something stupid? Mm-hmm. You know, drink some milk or no, full well, stomach on ache. accident. But on accident, mm-hmm. definitely not on purpose. Yes. Yes. No. I hope not. Uh-huh. If your mom or dad's not around and you guys are at like a party or you know new restaurant with your friends. How do you know you can have something? Um, we usually order the same thing when we go to the different restaurants because we know that, that we can have, and that's something that we can have, such as like um, fries or a hamburger. But if not, then I can call my mom or I can ask the chef. Do you call your mom and then have them talk to like the chef or something? Yeah, I call her because something. she knows everything that we can have and we can't. Mm-hmm. Or I would call my dad also, yeah. Can you spell Galaxemia? Uh, G-A-L-A-C-T-O-S-E-M-I-A. Yes. G-A-L-A-C-T-O-S-E-M-I-A. If your mom or dad were around, you were at like a party or a restaurant, they didn't know, how can you ensure that you know you can have whatever they're having? <laughs> we're in my home. <laughs> What's your favorite restaurant? Olive Garden. <laughs> What impact has Alexei had on your life in general? Mm-hmm. Well, the galactosemia part doesn't bother me, but I have a tremor and that bothers me. Um, your friends are cool with the fact that you have galactosemia? Yeah. Um, how would you explain it to someone that had no idea what it was? I pretty much just thought one was like, I can't have a dairy. Do you have any good or bad stories about what Sam experiences? I had deep brain simulation surgery. Um, last February. And I had a stroke during surgery. Um, have you ever been teased about galactosemia? Mm, not about galactosemia, but about my trauma. What impact has galactosemia had on the sports point or life in general? Mm. Well, it's just a little harder to get, like, to get um, calcium in my bones. I guess so. Be, I need to be more careful when I do sports. Like yeah. Some sports. What do you play? Football, okay. baseball, and I swim. Uh, do you have any good or bad stories with the experience with Alexia? No, but I think it's really nice that I have like to see me sometimes because I have an excuse to not eat stuff that I don't like, like school 